Hey guys, welcome to my lab. And um, today, what I'm looking at doing is developing some kind of ballistic parachute for RR01. RR01 is the single ducted fan vector thrusted uh, VTOL craft rocket thing. Um, it weighs about four kilograms, and I'm very, very worried about taking it on high altitude, there being something wrong and it coming crashing down uh, like it did a little while ago uh, and smashing to pieces. So you may have seen in some other videos, I've come up with this uh, pod system on the top here um, and I managed to carry three cans of Pepsi, uh, which are 330 mil cans. So that's a good bit of weight there, like probably close to a kilogram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here a ballistic shoot type system that if I need to, I can deploy it and it will shoot out of the top, fully extending the parachute so that literally uh, the parachute's ready to open in like a fraction of a second. So this thing could be, I don't know, maybe 50 foot off the ground. We can shoot this out the top and the parachute will be like literally ready to open. And then as soon as it starts falling, parachute's there. And then we get a nice relatively slow descent, saving the radical rocket, RR01. So the idea is, what we have is, uh, here's the pod. Here's, here's the pod on top of the radical rocket like this. And we've got the radical rocket R01 down here. That's down here. You know, everybody knows that the dustbin thing. Um, and then inside here, we have a tube that contains the parachute all scrunched up inside. And then basically, there's a hole in the top here. This shoots out the top. Um, and when it shoots out, uh, so imagine, imagine here's the pod with a hole here like this shoots out the top and then, then as it's firing out the, the line is tethered inside and it unravels from the tube inside and then the parachute that's all scrumpled up when this flies off it's all kind of ready to go and then the parachute's fully extended and then this nose cone flies off and then the parachute opens and then the R01 uh, descends safely so that's the idea so I've got a cardboard tube with line inside and then the idea is is that it's going to be a nose coming on here which I've designed already which you can hear 3d printing in the background this fires off obviously this is happening really really quickly uh, this gets extended out and then it gets to a point where this has got mass maybe still a little bit of thrust and it this is attached obviously to R01 this flies off and then the parachute is ready to go and then literally within a few feet it opens out. Um, it's going to be a much bigger parachute than this, this is just a test one. So that's the idea. Uh, I'm going to stick a solid fuel rocket motor on a nose cone, attach it to the cardboard tube, attach this to the ground, fire that in the air and see if it is powerful enough for it to sort of shoot off and uh, deploy the whole thing. And then what we do is scale it up with the bigger parachute, which is uh, 72 inches, um, with a bigger rocket motor. Maybe we'll put the rocket motor on the thrust analyzer, see how much thrust it produces, weigh the whole parachute system, do the math, and see if it's gonna work. So that's the idea. So here's the first test. So I learned a huge amount from that test. What I noticed was the line that I've tethered to the, uh, to the actual rocket, which obviously I didn't want to lose, um, what it was doing was it was pulling on the front of the, of the tube and it was turning it around. So by the time the other line um, tightened up, it wasn't pointing in a straight line, so it didn't pull it out, it kind of pulled it at an angle. So there's, there's a good possibility it could have actually just pulled it straight out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a straw down the bottom so that the line can be tied to the nose cone at the end because obviously that's the heaviest part with the, mock, uh, with the motor. I don't want to risk just tying it to the tube in case that flies off. So I'll tie it to the um, around here and then have the line going down and then through a straw at the bottom. 
so that when it's flying, um, the line will be basically at the bottom, keeping it going in a straight line. Um, what I'm also going to do is I think I'm going to just go for the scale up now. Uh, I'm going to try for the D-class motor, which is much, much uh, more powerful. And I'm going to put it in the um, thrust analyzer, first of all, and see what kind of power we get out of it and uh, where that power is in time on the thrust power curve. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, this is the um, D120 booster thrust test using the thrust analyzer. Um, using a custom-built um, ignition system, uh, Estes rocket motor. Um, I've got the thrust analyzer app open, which is going to measure the thrust, and I've got the thrust analyzer rig down there with the motor all ready to go. Okay, so as you can see, the nozzle blew at that time, so I've reloaded um, a new motor, and hopefully this time we'll get a full, nice, complete burn. Okay, so it looks like we've got about 800 grams of thrust to play with. Now the new 72 inch ring parachute's about 350 grams. So all we need to do is find a larger cardboard tube, redesign the nose cone and the motor holder, and retest. Now that's gonna be in part two. So uh, thank you again for watching guys, and see you all in the next video.